Oh, a big shakeup on Capitol Hill. Thursday, House Republicans are scheduled to choose a new majority leader, all because a Tea Party challenger, a little-known college professor named David Bratt, unseated Eric Cantor in the Virginia primary. Cantor, the conservative House majority leader, was the second most powerful congressman in this country. His stinging defeat is a big win for the Tea Party. And Senator Rand Paul, a Tea Party favorite, says it's time to expand the party's tent. If you want a Republican to be the next president of the United States, we are going to have to be a bigger, better, bolder party. There's a big debate going on, though. Some say for us to be bigger, we have to dilute our message. We need to be Democrat light. We need to be more moderate to get more electoral votes. I couldn't disagree more. In fact, I think the core of our message, we could be even more bold, more honest, more forthright. All right, so let's talk about it. Joining me in the studio is Jenny Beth Martin, the national coordinator of the Tea Party Patriots. And in Pittsburgh, Republican strategist Lenny McAllister. Um, all right, Jenny Beth, uh, to you first. So um, does this defeat for Cantor indicate that there is a, I guess, a, a newer kind of movement by the Tea Party? What happened? Well, the message that the Tea Party has been talking about for the last five years, one of personal and economic freedom, a debt-free future, that is a message that Dave Brett talked about, and that's the message he won on. And he won because the grassroots Tea Party activists in his district got out and talked about these issues with their fellow voters. And so, Lenny, we heard from, uh, you know, Senator Lindsey Graham earlier today. Day, um, who won his race in South Carolina, who said, you know what, he had good ground game. And he didn't say it directly, but is it the case that maybe Cantor uh, lost touch, took too, took too much for granted, maybe? I, I think that is exactly what transpired. And that's part of where the Tea Party element came from in the first place five years ago, was the fact that they felt detached from both Democrats and liberals as well as Republicans. It was all about getting back to the grassroots and making sure that people actually spoke with the people on the ground and represented them in a very real, tangible, and ongoing way. Eric Cantor forgot about that. That's why he lost. And so when you hear Rand Paul say, you know, the answer is not to be more moderate. Instead, you know, quite the opposite, Jenny Beth, it's about being as conservative as you can be. Um, is this a new, I guess, a, a, I guess a reconfiguration of the Republican Party now, um, now that the Tea Party is digging in its heels and is showing that it really has might? Well, what, what we care about is making sure that we have an economic future where we have a debt-free a debt-free country where we're paying down our debt and where we have more opportunity in this country. And a lot of times the Republicans stray from that message and they, they, they start doing things like talking about fixing Obamacare rather than repealing it and restoring health care freedom. It's time to stick to your message, stick to your principles, don't waver from them. And when you stick to your principles, you can win. Hmm. And so whatever happened to... Um a more unified Republican Party, Lenny. I mean, that seemed to have come from the last election. That was the lesson, but it seems like that memory is, you know, short. Well, it's because we oftentimes get into these fights among conservatives. What we have to remember is we need relatable, digestible conservatism. And I think too often than not, the conservative wing and my fellow conservatives forget that ivory tower conservatism is just as bad as ivory tower liberalism. If it's something that the average voter and the swing vote voter cannot relate to, we cannot win. And if we cannot win, we cannot legislate. And if we cannot legislate, we can't lead America out of the depression that we're in right now from an economic standpoint as well as from a morale standpoint. So we have to make sure that we're more united, but we don't just get caught up in the philosophy of conservatism. We make sure that it's applicable across the diversity of America. That's something that oftentimes in these primaries we forget about. Another big test of uh, Tea Party power is a week away when longtime GOP incumbent Senator Thad Cochran faces a runoff against a Tea Party 
a challenger. So, Jenny Beth, what likely could happen? Well, what I know is going on in Mississippi right now is that the, the grassroots are out going door to door, making phone calls and talking about how Chris McDaniel is going to stand up and fight for them and how he represents Mississippi values and is not out of touch with the people of Mississippi. I've been on the ground in Mississippi for most of the last month and a half. I'm going back tomorrow and I think we'll see Chris McDaniel win. Hmm. All right, Lenny, how do you see it? I, I think that you you will probably see a change in Mississippi, but the hopeful thing with Cochran will be that he'll come in as one of a hundred to bring about a new direction in the Senate that will get America back on track. There are certainly things within the Tea Party message that make sense in regards to being fiscally responsible, getting the debt down and moving forward from there. But if we lead the type of in the type of way that we've seen previously, where it's more divisive than unifying, then it doesn't matter who we have taking this Senate seat from Mississippi, we're going to have the same old, same old, and that's not getting progress for America. Lenny McAllister, Jenny Beth Martin, thanks to both of you. Appreciate it. Thank you. God bless.